My name is Veronica Nohosa, and my Newbery Award-winning author is Madeline Langle. Madeline Langle was born on November 29, 1918, in New York City. Her childhood was not typical. She was mostly cared for by a nanny and was only allowed to eat dinner with her parents on Sunday afternoons. Most of her school years were spent in a boarding school setting. Her father, Charles Camp's lungs, were affected during World War I by mustard gas due to the damage they moved to the French Alps because it was said the fresh air would benefit the condition of his lungs. While attending an English boarding school, Langle mostly focused on writing stories, poems, and journals for herself. This affected her grades, but she did not allow it to discourage her. In the fall of 1933, her parents sent her to a boarding school in Charleston, South Carolina. This was the first time Langle remembers being happy about going to school. For high school, Langle attended Ashley Hall in South Carolina. This is where she truly began to flourish academically. Sadly, her senior year, her father passed away due to the severe damage of his lungs. If she wasn't in school, you could find her vacationing with her mother on the beaches of Florida. In 1941, she graduated cum laude from Smith College where she majored in English. After graduation, she moved into a Greenwich Village apartment in New York. Her first job in the city was working and acting in a theater. This left her with enough time to continue writing, and she published her first two novels, The Small Rain, published in 1945, and Ilsa, published a year later. While working, she fell in love with a fellow actor, Hugh Franklin. Soon after, they married and started a family. In 1947, her beautiful baby girl Josephine was born and eventually they moved to Goshen, Connecticut to raise their family. They lived on a small dairy farm where there were more cows than people. In 1952, their son Byron was born. This caused Langle to fully commit herself to being a stay-at-home mom. In 1956, a close friend of the family passed away, leaving Maria, a seven-year-old little girl, orphaned. A year later, Maria was welcomed into the Franklin family. Today, Madeline Langle has 35 books to her name, including science fiction, suspense novels, novels for young adults, and poetry. A quote from Langle stated, No long-term marriage is made easily, and there have been times when I have been so angry or so hurt that I thought my love would never recover. And then, in the midst of near despair, something has happened beneath the surface. A bright little flashing fish of hope has flickered silver fins, and the water is bright, and suddenly I am returned to a state of love again. Till next time. I've learned that there will always be a next time, and that I will submerge in darkness and misery, but that I won't stay submerged. And each time something has been learned under the waters, something has been gained, and a new kind of love has grown. The best I can ask for is that this love, which has been built on countless failures, will continue to grow. I can say no more than that this is mystery and gift and that somehow or other, through grace, our failures can be redeemed and blessed. A Wrinkle in Time, Langle's Newbery Award-winning book is about an atomic physicist who disappears on a secret mission. His son, Charles Wallace Murray, daughter Meg Murray, and their friend Calvin O'Keefe search for him going on a journey through time and space. Meg, Charles Wallace, and Calvin embark on a dangerous quest to find Mr. Murray. A Wrinkle in Time is a science fiction chapter book that is mysterious and leaves you wanting to read more. This is not one of those books you can put down before getting to the next chapter and is intended for students in 4th grade and up. Unusual things happen for the Murray family in A Wind in the Door, the second book of the Wrinkle in Time Quintet. Meg is now a senior in high school, and Charles Wallace, who is now 6, is a genius. But Charles Wallace has mysteriously fallen ill, and when he tells Meg there are dragons in the garden, she worries that he's only seeing things. Then she sees the outlandish creature that is known as a singular cherubim that has been sent to help Meg in a quest to heal Charles Wallace. The travelers journey from a galaxy far away to inside Charles Wallace's body where a cosmic battle is taking place. Meg saves her little brother with the help of Calvin and the principal, Mr. Jenkins.
A swiftly tilting planet, the third book of the Wrinkle in Time series, 15-year-old Charles Wallace and a unicorn undertake a dangerous journey through time in a desperate attempt to stop the destruction of the world by the mad dictator. Charles Wallace and the unicorn are not alone in their quest. Meg, who is now expecting her first child, is still able to enter young Charles Wallace's thoughts and emotions. Unexpectedly, he is faced with the ultimate test of his faith and will as he is sent within for people from another time to search for a way to avoid the tragedy threatening them all. In Many Waters, the fourth book of the Wrinkle in Time Quintet is a story about the Murray twins, Sandy and Dennis, taking an unexperienced journey through time and space, unlike their brother and sister, Charles Wallace and Meg, who are experienced time and space travelers. The twins travel to biblical times where they must find a way to travel back to their own time before they are killed in a natural disaster, but they are worried about the fate of Noah's beautiful granddaughter, Yelith. Forced to think independently for the first time, the twins affect history in ways they couldn't have ever imagined, learning that some things have to be believed to be seen. A quote from Langle stated, We don't want to feel less when we have finished a book. We want to feel that new possibilities of being have been open to us. We don't want to close a book with a sense that life is totally unfair and that there is no light in the darkness. We want to feel that we have been given illumination. Surprisingly enough, A Wrinkle in Time was rejected by 26 publishers before it was actually published in 1962. This was the best children's book of 1963 and 50 years later has sold a whopping 8 million copies and is currently in its 69th printing. Madeline Langle received many honors and awards. A Wrinkle in Time received the John Newberry Medal, Lewis Carroll Shelf Award, Sequoia Award, and was the runner-up for the Hans Christian Andersen Award. The Moon by Night and Camilla were awarded the Austrian State Literary Prize. In 1974, Langle was awarded the New England Roundtable of Children's Literature Honor Certificate. A Wind in the Door was awarded the Learning A through V Award. The Rational Season won the Seabury Lenten Selection Award. A Ring of Endless Light was awarded the Newberry Honor Book, Dorothy Canfield Fisher Children's Book Award, California Young Reader Medal, Colorado Children's Book Award, and was nominated for the John Newberry Medal. A Swiftly Tilting Planet was awarded the Newberry Honor Award and the American Book Award. Madeline Langle passed away on September 7, 2007 in Litchfield, Connecticut. Langle was 88 years old and died of natural causes. She had been living in a nursing home since 2004, and before moving to the nursing home, she had maintained homes in Manhattan, New York, and Goshen, Connecticut. Langle was survived by her daughter, Josephine F. Jones, and their adopted daughter, Maria Rooney, five grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Her husband, Hugh Franklin, died in 1986, and her son, Brian Franklin, died in 1999. Madeline Langle believed you have to write the book that wants to be written, and if the book will be too difficult for grown-ups, then you write it for children.